Hey guys, Stealth here. In this guide, we're going to have a look at the veterancy bonuses. What do they do for you? Why can you use them? And how should you use them? Now, the veterancy bonuses don't start when you uh, are actually in the deck builder, but they start earlier. They start right here. When you see this screen, create the deck. The moment you select a type, or also known as a specialization, you're also going to get XP. So you're going to get that veterancy bonus, or at least a little bit. For example, if I pick the armored specialization, I'm going to get 2 XP for type of, sorry, for units in the tank type. So that means that my units in the tank type will automatically level up. They'll get, for example, a uh, bonus from rookie automatically to hardened. And this is something you have to keep in mind when you're creating your deck. What kind of deck am I creating? What kind of situation will it face? Am I building it for a 10v10? Am I building it for a low point deck? All of that has impact on the type of XP and the type of specialization you're going to use. Now in this case I'm just going to keep it general because that really helps explaining the situation. I'm going for a Eurocore deck. Now in the logistics you can actually have a veterancy bonus and this is sometimes overlooked because normally you have just these units, just transports. They come for example with command infantry in this case. Uh, you to have the Lutch, uh, with sorry, the Fudge, which is the uh, command vehicle. CVs, of course, are not promoted either. Uh, transports not promoted, but command tanks can be promoted. So yes, there is a veterancy bonus in the command section or in the logistics section. Now let's have a look at what exactly veterancy does for you. Veterancy does a couple things. It gives you a bit more accuracy. It gives you less dispersion on artillery. Now, this only applies to artillery, so this tank is not going to get any more accurate. A tank either hits or misses, and there is no dispersion. 200% faster morale recovery, so that means that if a unit gets hit and it gets panicked, it is going to get uh, back on its feet, basically, a lot faster. You have plus 10% more chance to see and identify enemy units and this is very very important when you're using recon because you want every advantage you can get to get the most out of that as a very good or exceptional recon and the stun duration is going to be a lot less now for example at hardened the stun duration is minus 39% so um, these units compared to rookies for example have a lot less stun effect or a lot less stun duration so the moment they get hit, for example, by an artillery shell, they will be stunned for a little bit, but not half as long, or almost not half as long as a rookie would. These bonuses go up as high, uh, the higher you go up the veterancy skill, or the veterancy tree, depending how you want to name that. For example, this one had minus 39% st uh, stun effect duration, this one has minus 60 it also gets more accuracy, less dispersion, a lot faster morale recovery, and 15% more chance to see and identify enemy units. Now the flip side to getting more veterancy is that you get less of a unit. For example, if I take this command tank, the AMX 30B CNE, you get three at hardened or two at veteran. So that is really where you're gonna have to start making choices. Am I going for a, a low point game, for example, where I can only bring in a few units? In that situation, the few units you can bring in will have to be high veterancy. Some countries, um, such as China for example, seem to depend on spamming tactics. And in that case, it could be very very interesting to take a lot of low veterancy units, say a lot of cheap low veterancy unit tanks, and then try to swarm the enemy that way. If you're doing a 10v10, I would take units with high veterancy, because normally you're operating as a team. Now I know this is getting more and more rare in 10v10, it seems that way anyway. But the less units you have, the better you can micromanage them and the more chances they have of staying alive. And in that case, a veterancy bonus would also help. Now there are some exceptions, so let's start to look at what kind of units I would bring in which situation. I'm not going to discuss any of the command infantry, but the command tanks could be interesting. I rarely, rarely use these, only in exceptional circumstances when I need an exceptionally heavily armored command vehicle on the front line. Otherwise, I will just not use these guys. But let's say that I do want to have a couple of those. 
Um, in case of this Command Leopard 2, I would go with 2 hardened. The reason because is sorry, the reason for that is that if I have 2 hardened, I have 2 units on this card, and otherwise I only have 1. Now, even as it is a command tank, so it can take a lot of punishment, you can even dish it out. I mean, 16 AP power is not bad. Still, this thing is not supposed to see combat. And the combat is really where these veterancy bonuses are best. Because you get that extra accuracy, you get that faster morale recovery, and less stun duration. This thing will hopefully not get stunned, <coughs> not lose any morale, and won't need its accuracy. So in this case, I'm going with 2 hardened. Now, as I mentioned, the rest is not important because the rest doesn't have any veterancy bonuses. It doesn't need it. It doesn't have a gun. It doesn't see combat, or at least it shouldn't if you play the game right. So, infantry. What kind of infantry do you level up and why? It really, really depends on the kind of infantry you're using. So, let's go through it from the top. Let's look at anti-aircraft. Eurocore gets a couple of different guys. And uh, the first thing I want to mention is that depending on the transport, you sometimes get less or more availability. For example, this Mistral, if I bring it in the AMX-13 VTT, I get 6 and 4. If I bring it in the Panther, I also get 6 and 4. So for this unit, it doesn't matter. If I, however, switch to Commandos, and say I want to bring in Commando Marines in the Puma 330H, I get 8 and 6. If I switch to the Panther, I get 6 and 4. Because the game values this Panther helicopter as higher. So this can also have an impact on your availability bonuses. So keep that in mind. Do you really need this super transport? Or is it okay to bring in those Commando Marines in a VAB, for example? Can I bring them in a helicopter? Is it safe? What kind of role is the unit going to perform? Anyway, back to the AA category. You have the Fliegerfaust, the Fliegerfaust 2, and the Mistral. Now let's have a look at, for example, the Fliegerfaust. This unit has 35% accuracy versus uh, anti-air, or versus air units, so that is not very good. In this case, I would like to get a bit more accuracy, so in this case I would go with the hardened bonus, because it gives me more of an accuracy bonus than trained. Now you could do the math and say that, okay, if I deploy um, 12 units, I get an accuracy of 30%. So let's say I have 12 units, accuracy 30%. Let's round it down to 30% so you get um, 6 missiles. So let's say we get 72 missiles out of this group. Let's say every missile gets launched. 72 missiles, 6 times 12. But you only have 30% accuracy. So that means you only have 24 hits. Is it worth it? Maybe. At Hardened, you get plus 16% accuracy. Now, unfortunately, this is not a general roundup, so it's not 16% plus 35% is 51%. It doesn't work that way. It's a small increment. It is 16% of this accuracy, if I remember correctly. So it is not a flat-out bonus. But this means that, say, you have 16% of uh, 35%, so that's, say, 4 to 5%. Rounded up to 40% accuracy total. We now get 48 missiles. 8 times 6. Sorry, 8 times 6 is... Uh, yeah, that's 48. And an accuracy of 40%. So 48, say, um, you get about 24 to 26 hits. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. That is, unless you start to factor in what kind of map you're using. And that is always something you have to do. What kind of map... Or what kind of situation do I want to use this unit in? Normally, I would go with 8 hardened. If, however, you're defending a larger area, or you want to have um, as much defense against, for example, an airborne deck, spread out over a large area and in forests, you could go with 12 of trained. And this way, you can have a little bit more accuracy, or a little less accuracy, but more um, spamming ability, as it were. So this is how you can use the accuracy or the veterancy bonuses on infantry. Let's take another example. Anti-tank infantry. These guys come with 35% accuracy, the F2 version with 40%, and then there's the F3 with 
Again, it depends on how you're going to use this unit. Is this going to be your main anti-tank weapon? Because in that case you usually won't need 26 AP power. It doesn't mean that you're going to take a lot of supplies to keep this guy going. You could, for example, settle for the, uh, the Milan 2. Milan F2 with 24 AP power. And you get more units. You get 8 and 6 versus 6 and 4. 4 ATGM units in my deck for one card, I consider a bad trade. So that is usually something that I will pick. But if you're using this deck in, for example, a low point tactical deck, that could actually be worth it. Because if you're coming up against that Lapper 2A5 or that T90 from the other side, you want to have something that can kill it with one or two shots. So in that case you want to have high veterancy, high accuracy, and a lot of AP power. So that is when this unit would be very handy. So again, I'm not going to be able to give you any solid rules for um, if this then that. But what I do try to do is to explain you why and when you should keep these things in mind. When do you go for trained and when do you go for hardened? Because the ATGM Milan F3 is pretty good it doesn't need an accuracy bonus, so you could take it a trained, and then you still have six, and then it might be worth it. Now, some special note for units who are really going toe to toe with the enemy, such as uh, Falschirm Jaeger and Commando Marines. These are almost, or especially the Falschirm Jaeger, these are almost purely anti infantry weapons. In that case, you want to have as much veterancy as you can. Because that will mean that they are much, much more effective against other infantry. They also get less stun duration and they recover a lot faster from morale losses. So in this situation it would definitely be worth it to get only 4 units of Volsjumjäger. Now again, it will depend on what kind of transport you bring. For example, the um, CH-53 gets 6 and 4. And if you bring them in a standard footch, you get uh, 8 and 6. So ask yourself, is this Volsium Jäger 90 really supposed to be airborne? Do I need that big chopper? Or can I bring them in in, say, a Dornier 205, which gets 8 and 6 as well? Are they going to be main infantry killers? In that case, you could bring them in a footch to make it even cheaper. Commando Marines are units which I usually use behind enemy lines because they have a lot of firepower. Um, they're a pretty big unit, 15 guys, and they carry some very nice weaponry. In that case, I want to have as many of these guys as possible, so I would use 8 veterans. Because that means that I can hit the enemy at 2 or 3 locations on the map, say with squads of 2 or 3 guys. Again, in that case, if they're operating behind enemy lines, I would usually want them in a helicopter. And that will impact my availability, 8 and 6. If I switch to the pirate, I get 6 and 4, and this is the same for the panther. Now, um, one thing you have to keep in mind with infantry is that not only the infantry unit, so not only the commando marine gets the veterancy bonus, but also this panther. This Panther is already a pretty good helicopter, so in this case I wouldn't use four, because I don't think it's worth it. I think it's worth it to have six of those guys at Veteran. But it really depends on your taste and the situation. Um, let's have a look at some other guys, maybe. Um, yeah, here for example, the Panzer Grenadiers. These guys are the German shock troopers. And they have the specialty of coming in different vehicles, the Martyr 1, 1A1, 1A2, 1A3, and Martyr 2. When would you use which? Well, um, it depends on what kind of role you have for the Panzer Grenadier. Sometimes you want to bring in the Panzer Grenadiers just as Panzer Grenadiers, just as infantry, and really ignore the Martyr, more or less. But sometimes you're going to be using these guys specifically to get the vehicle they come with. Especially for the Americans, this is definitely true. Because the Americans come with uh, some of the best IFVs in the game in the form of the Bradley. Now, the Martyr II itself is already a very, very good vehicle. 10 frontal armor on an IFV means that they can survive a lot of tank rounds. It also means that I want to have as many of these guys as possible. So for the Martyr 2, I would go with Hardened and uh, not Veteran, because it gives me 8 vehicles instead of 6. It will mean that my Panzer Grenadiers themselves are a little less experienced. 
but in my experience with the game, Panzer Grenadiers are such excellent units that they will level up very, very quickly. Now, sometimes there will also be a difference in availability between the, uh, say, the standard version or the 85 or 90s version. Because the 90s version usually has better weaponry, and that translates itself into less availability. I don't think I can have, or I can show you any, yeah, here's one. The Rimas, the standard Rimas have 12 and 8 availability, Rima 85, 10 and 7, because they have better weaponry. They have the AP Las uh, Law weapon versus their LREC F1, and you can just see how much better this thing is. A lot more AP power. Now let's take, uh, for example, these Rima 85s. I want to have as many of these as possible. Do I want them to be on the front line, or do I want them to come in a little bit later? For me, I want to bring them in usually a bit later, so a vehicle is good enough. But this vehicle, because it carries an autocannon, again gets an availability penalty. The chopper got 10 and 7, this got 8 and 6. Now, please don't take Rima 85s, for example, at, sh at Veteran, because these guys are usually the, what keeps and holds a town. So this is usually not something you want to have low numbers of. In this case, I would go with the standard VAB for the Rima 85, get 10 and 7 and be done with it. Now let's switch to the support category. In the support category, you have all sorts of units supporting your main force, but what kind of availability or veterancy do you give these guys? It depends. Again, it depends. This is only the AA gun category. Um, let's take the Jeopard for example. The Jeopard is the main German AA gun. Um, even the standard Jeopard for 45 points I really really like. Then you get more, um, um, you get the improved version of the Jeopard and just watch how the availability works. You got 8 and 6, 6 and 4, or 4 and 3. I would not pick this. The accuracy on this thing is already amazing, 65% on an anti-air gun. So hardened is usually not what I would go for in this situation. And I'm now keeping in mind that I'm building a deck for a general situation. So let's say a 2v2, a 3v3, etc. If I was building this deck for a 10v10, this might actually be an interesting unit. Because I can micromanage it so I can make sure it stays alive or at least improve its chances of survival. It means that it's going to be even more accurate so even more effective in the game. It will see a lot of combat and in that case the faster morale recovery and the less stun duration would really help it survive. So those things is something that you have to decide for yourself. Now for a general deck I would go with the standard Jeopard and get six of those or 8 depending on how long you estimate the match will last or the Jeopard A1 and then take those at 6. If you compare those you're going to see that it is worth it to take um, 6 of these Jeopard A1s because they get uh, let's say I believe 6 at trained which is usually enough to survive a match. Now um, AA this is again really really depending on the kind of units you get and the kind of role that you have in mind for the unit. A Roland 2 is a unit which is mostly AA for airplanes in my situation, in my decks. That's how I use them. Again, your situation may vary. If I want them to hit something, they already do that at 65%. I know that they fire two missiles, which is usually enough to kill an aircraft. And 65% will usually mean that they will actually hit it. So I don't need the availability bonus, or the accuracy bonus in this case. I will go with trained, because this one will mean that I get six of these vehicles. So I can spread them out in groups of two over the front line. And by doing that, I have a good AA coverage all over my area. Now, if you want to have a dedicated AA unit, you could go with the Roland 3. And you could take four of those because they have a bit more range, a bit more range against helicopters and the same accuracy. In this case, if you're using the Roland 3, I would go with 4 trained because again, it gives me just that little bit extra units. Now, 
Um, what I could also do is try and get some uh, lesser units and get more of those to sort of fill out the gaps. So let's say I go with the Roland, which is mostly an AA anti-helicopter unit. And that will impact what kind of uh, accuracy you want. Because if I'd have the Jeopardy in here, I wouldn't use this one. Because I want long-range anti-airplane defense. I don't want long-range anti-helicopter defense, because I already have that. So in this case, this one wouldn't be any good. Let's move on to artillery. Howitzers. Howitzers are uh, really impacting, or impacted, sorry, by the dispersion. So this is really when that dispersion, 19% less dispersion, comes in handy. Because it will mean that you hit something or you don't. And if you hit something with a gun this big, it will usually die. If you miss something, it will usually live. And if that is the command vehicle, it may just lose you the game. Now, the Caesar is a bit of an exception, because it already has such a low dispersion that I will always try to take as many of these things as possible, unless you want to really, really snipe your round through the, say, the side door of a vehicle, but that is rarely the case. So this is why I'm going to go with two of trained. Now, what I can also do is have a look at the other artillery units, because they have less disper or more dispersion. And in that case, it would be actually interesting to go with a bit more accuracy. Because that means a little less dispersion, and uh, the lesser dispersion means that they are more accurate. So they can actually hit stuff now. Leaves me with mortars and MLRS. Mortars I would always take in numbers, because they already usually have quite a low dispersion. 2730 20, here, and these guys 3640. So these don't need any accuracy. What I want a mortar battery to do is um, deliver a lot of firepower in a very short amount of time on a small area, say a town. So you want to have as many of these vehicles as possible. So in this case I would go with six or even four to get a little bit more dispersion. Or sorry, a little less dispersion, a little more accuracy. Um, MLRS, I barely use these things, but I would always recommend that you take these guys at trained because they generally have a decent dispersion of their own. They have a low dispersion, 45, 50, so you won't really need any of these at Veteran. Again, if you're running a low point tactical game, so where you have very, very low income, this one might change the game if you pick it to Veteran. Now, tanks. Um, I'll try to keep this brief because tanks is really, really a large area to cover. Depending on the tank and its role, you pick the availability and the veterancy. Is it going to be a tank that's going to be seeing a lot of frontline combat? And that is usually the role for every tank. I would generally recommend that you level them up. Get them at Hardened Veteran or even Elite. Let's say you use the Leopard 1A5. This one I would use in a defensive slash medium offensive role. Because they don't have a lot of frontal armor. They already have good accuracy. But since these things are going to be seeing combat, they will be taking fire they will lose accuracy because they will lose morale. That morale bonus is important. So in this case, I want to go with a little bit more veterancy because it gives me faster morale recovery and less stun effect duration. So I would take eight hardened Leopard 1A5s. If I'm looking at the Leclerc, this is the French main battle tank, the uh, expert version, let's say, the super heavy. In this case, I would go with three trained Leclercs because this means that the Leclerc does get a little bit of a bonus, a little bit more than Rookie, but um, I'd rather have three of these vehicles at a lower veterancy, and they will level up in-game pretty quickly, than have a little bit fewer of them at Hardened. Again, it may depend on a low point tactical deck, a 10v10 deck, or whatever kind of deck you're building. Leopard 1A5 is even, uh, sorry, Leopard 2A5 is even worse. You get two at trained or one at veteran. So this means that um, I will definitely pick the trained. Because the veteran, although it may be a very, very good tank, if you lose it, you lose a lot of firepower in your deck. If you lose one of these tanks and you have the trained, you can always bring in the second one. Or have them back each other up so that the first one doesn't die in the first place. 
Now again, for tanks it's important not to have um, a lot of loss uh, to uh, morale recovery. So you want to have high morale recovery on these guys and as, um, as high of a stun duration minus effect as possible. So the low lesser time they're stunned, the more they're going to be effective. If for example you're taking the Leopard 2, it depends on how you're using the tank. If you want to spam this tank you could go with 10 trained but I would usually go with 7 hardened because it gives me just that little bit of extra survivability on the tank and this means that they might actually make it all the way to uh, elite depending on how well they are doing at surviving, how well they are being managed by you. Recon. Now, I already mentioned it, this is where the uh, more chances to see and identify enemy units comes in. This is where that becomes important. Some units you can only pick at one veterancy level, so those really aren't that interesting to look at. These guys, for example, are a different story. This is the French Recon wheeled vehicle, as you can see. I can take 12 of these at trained, or 8 at hardened. Now, unless you're using this thing in an offensive role, I would go with hardened, because it gives you a little bit more chance to see and identify enemy units, which is exactly what the role for Recon is. It is not so much meant as a fighting unit, depending on the position in your deck and the position on the battlefield. For example, the BGS, this is just standard passive recon. This is a couple of infantry guys you park in a bush. These will never ever see combat. Take them at trained. If I'm using the Leopard 1, the Leopard 1A1 scout tank, these guys will see combat. In that case, it might be interesting to take them at trained, so I can group them up in pairs of two, for example, or uh, two sections of one, and have these escort a push, so that I have actual eyes in the enemy's uh, position, and I have a bit more accuracy and a bit more survivability. Let's have a look at the Razit. This thing only gets four, so that's not interesting. Um, the Lutch is interesting, or the Lux, I'm still not sure how I need to pronounce that. The Lux has 6 at trained or 4 at hardened. In this case I would go with 6 at trained because it's a very good unit. It's very fast, very mobile, very good optics and it comes with an auto cannon. So in that case I would take 6 at trained. Now some nations have a couple of these guys such as the Commandos Paras. These guys are actually commandos or can be used as such. And that means that if you're using them against other infantry if you're using them behind enemy lines, that will depend, or that will change the um, amount of veterancy I would use. For the standard commander's para, if I use them in a recon role, I would use six at hardened. If I'm using them behind enemy lines, where they will usually see combat, I will take them at veteran. This will mean that I have a bit more units to spread out over the battlefield. This means that I have a lot more firepower, more survivability on the few units that I have. So it's always that um, thinking you have to do. Is it going to be survivable? Is it going to see combat? Yes or no. Move on to the vehicles. Vehicles, again, depends on what kind of vehicle you're looking at. Let's say you're looking at the Mephisto. Mephisto is an ATGM carrier. It does have an okay accuracy of 40%, although it's not great. I would want to have a bit of an accuracy bonus. So I want to have these guys at hardened. Because I usually don't use that many HGM vehicles anyway. If you take 8 at trained you could spread them out over a larger area. But be prepared to resupply these guys more because they'll hit less. They won't be as effective. If you're looking at a tank destroyer or a fire support vehicle such as the Marta VTS-1. This unit I will take at hardened. Because you already get a good number of them at Hardened, I mean 12 units is nice, and I will usually not use up all 12 of them, unless I'm playing really, really bad. So 12 is okay, it will means a little bit extra accuracy, and although these things will operate on the front line, I hope not to expose them to enemy fire too much, because they don't have that much survivability. If you want to spam these things, if you want to really spread them out over your front line or use them in large numbers in a push, go with trained. 
Now the other category you're going to see in this uh, vehicle tab might be, for example, the Centurion AVRE, um, a napalm tank, all stuff that is very, very good against infantry. Those units are usually going to be very, very close to the combat and you do not want them stunned. You do not want them panicking. So make sure you always pick as high of an availability, sorry, as high as a veteran C as you can get. Helicopters. Um, again, depending on the type of role the helicopter will play. Is it an ATGM carrier? How is the base accuracy? Base accuracy on the 105P is good. So I'll take six at trained because I can sh um, ship supplies, sorry, ship ATGMs back and forth. If the accuracy isn't that good, let's see, for example, the Gazelle 342M Hot, I can take um, seven of these at hardened to give that thing a little boost and still have a good amount of ATGMs left. The Tiger, I would use at the lower um, veterancy because you get more units that way. It's the same situation as the Leopard 2A5 or the French Leclerc battle tank. You want to have more availability of these units because they are so good and they are pretty rare. Finally, in the air category, let's go through them one by one. Air superiority. Now the Rafale, of course, since it is a prototype, you only get one of these guys at Elite. Um, I like this plane a lot, but it is at one card pretty vulnerable. If you lose this one, you lose your only air superiority fighter. So what I usually do in this case is go with the F4 FKWS and take two at trained. If you team these guys up, you can do that for 280 points versus 180 for one jet. You're going to have a bit more survivability and more firepower on target. You will also have two of these so that if one crashes, dies or whatever is unavailable, you still have the other one. So with air superiority fighters, higher veteran C is generally better because it means more accuracy, uh, faster stun recovery and that's especially important if you're hit by an AA missile. Because sometimes you'll see bombers with low uh, veteran C just being hit by an AA missile and then consequently being taken out by a cheap anti-air unit just because they're stunned, just because they cannot react. But for an air superiority fighter, I would go with a high um, elite unit or two lower veteran C. And I prefer two lower veteran C. Anti-tank. Uh, Eurocore only gets one, other countries may get more. The Super Eton Dar is uh, both loved and hated on the battlefield because it is your tank sniper. Now because it already has a very very good accuracy and a good range, this thing can usually stay outside the range of AA if you play it right, if you let it come in from the right side. So I will use three at Rookie. If you're playing a 10v10 low point tactical game or even a 2v2 low point tactical, Having two of these at Veteran, which will further boost their accuracy, might mean that this thing is extremely dangerous. And that way Veteran C might come in handy. Now, bombers, I usually consider bombers as freight trucks. Because all they do is come in, drop their bombs and get the hell out. That is usually the role for pure bombers. I'm not talking about multi-rolls just yet. So for pure bombers I will usually take um, the highest amount of availability because sometimes these things just die. Now multi-rolls can be a bit different. Again, it will really depend on the kind of unit you're using. The Peace Rhine, for example, is a multi-roll unit in the sense that it also has some AA missiles. And this means that it will be able to take down helicopters or planes, but I would prefer to use them against helicopters because their ECM isn't that good and this missile really has a low range against airplanes. It does however come with the ATGM or an AGM. It comes with the Maverick, 50% base accuracy. If you're using this thing as your main tank sniper I would go with Veteran because you want to make sure that these missiles hit. Veteran will do that. If you want to have more of these, if you're afraid that you cannot micromanage them well enough, that they will survive, take two at Rookie. Um, this one is pretty much a delivery vehicle again. It delivers the Beluga cluster bomb to a rookie. No question about it for me. Tornado 1DS or IDS 
to it rookie because they are there to deliver those Mark 83s. They're not there to fire their M9Ls, although these can be used if you're in a pinch against a lot of helicopters. Now let's have a quick look at the naval tab. Again, it will depend on the kind of map you're facing. But let's say you're facing a naval map where you want to have a lot of naval capability, so a lot of ships. Uh, supply ships aren't that interesting. Again, it depends. Are you going to be um, an offshore battery firing on the coast? In that case, you might want to take a couple of Lafayettes because they have good ground range. Are you facing a lot of naval threats? Are you going in with harpoons? Take the Hatsuyuki. And in this case, I would take two of them because one will mean that if this thing dies, you lose pretty much all of your air uh, anti-ship capability. The Congo is uh, a unit which you can only have one of, just because they are that expensive and that good. Other ships such as Chamseries, the more accurate the Chamserie, the less anti-ship missiles will breach through your defenses. And it is usually worth it to have six of these at Elite, because they are pretty damn good at that time. Um, if you're looking at the Monitor 1DS, sorry, 105, it's a 105 millimeter gun carrier. These things, depending on how you use them, will take higher veterancy or lower veterancy. If you're getting this thing for the M49, so for the howitzer, get eight of them because you can take a l or you can put a lot of fire down on target. If you want to put these guys right in the middle of the river to use their auto cannons, take them at a hardened veteran or elite because they will take a lot of fire. They will get panicked and they possibly might even get stunned. And that's when you want to have that availability to be a little less, just to be a little bit more survivable. Snap out of that panic, snap out of that uh, stun and get firing again. So this is how I look at veterancy. I hope it was useful to you. If it was, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more Wargame vids. If you still have a question on how you can actually use this veterancy or what kind of veterancy you, you, I'd use for a specific unit, please leave me a comment and I'll try to answer your question as best I can. Now, um, one last point. Veterancy is something that is often misunderstood. So if you have someone who can benefit from this video, please share it with him or her. I want to help as many people play Wargame as best as they can. So please share this video if you know anyone who might be able to use it. Post it on Reddit, post it on your Facebook page, I don't care. Just let as many people see this video as possible. Because the more people we have playing at a high level of Wargame, the more fun we're all going to have. Thanks for watching, hope you had fun, and hope this guide is useful, and I'll see you next video.